FC and two GPS trackers. Who should be our guys? What the hell are they doing here? More plasma containers. Looks like Skynet's here for good. Flamethrower? If I could get close enough to take a picture.
What's that music? Seems to be coming from here. Upstairs. Who left this here? It's probably a trap. Worth it, Ryan.
stronger. He should be somewhere around here. Closer. It's got to be here. They got him too. Oh, his goggles look attacked. Let's see the last picture he took. The infiltrator. It's back. Baron was right. Commander! Talk to me. They're dead. Everything turned out the way you said it would. Copy that. Get out of there. We need to figure out our next move. Let's meet at the docks. Get there as soon as possible. Over and out.
You're still alive? Good. Apparently Skynet's got a real hard-on for you. So we figured why not use you as bait? Aren't you afraid that Skynet will bring a lot of firepower if they know we're both here? Afraid? No. Prepared for that eventuality? Yes. We've got eyes on the ambush site from every angle. If anyone shows up, it means they were listening. What if it's one of our guys, or just a scavenger? Too bad. We can't have anyone or anything sabotage our plan. Not this time. This time? We were very close once before. For years, we've been preparing for the final attack. But it took just one man to fuck everything up. That day, Perry... Our previous field commander died, and I inherited control of South Division. Since then, I've been making sure that no one fucks up again. We've got movement. Take position. What do you have? A hooded man's walking down the street. Might be a scavenger. Rivers, you saw him. Is it the same model? Is it the infiltrator? I can't tell. We're waiting for your signal. I think that might be it. You think? Good enough for me. Cease fire! Cease fire! Target down! I repeat, target down! Go check him! Eyes on the target! Proceed with caution! Is he dead? What the fuck? It's the target! He can't get away! Fire at will! He's in the open! It's in the open! It's a fucking machine!
Commander. We got it. We finally got it. Good job, Rivers. Stay there. We're on our way. There was no doubt anymore. Skynet had created a cybernetic organism. It was designed to blur the line between a man and a machine. People started to think that there were Terminators amongst us, wolves in sheep's clothes. Some of us left, even though we hadn't seen any other infiltrators yet. Or at least, we didn't think we had. And that fear of not knowing was what turned the tide of this war. That night, Skynet 1. Uh, I still have to run some tests, so f for now I would say no. We need some more time, Connor. I know you don't want to hear this, Commander, but if there's one person who can help us, it's Dr. Mac. Mac? It, we don't even know if he's alive. He is. He's in the Hollywood Hills. We knew a time would come when we'd need him again, so we've kept an eye on him. Wait. You've been watching him without telling me? You let your emotions your judgment before, Commander. That's why I decided that Mac's whereabouts were no longer this your This bullshit. Concern. He can't just magically fix all of our problems. He's a man, not a god. A man that makes that's mistakes. That's enough, Commander. You know what happened last time. He's the reason Perry's dead. I said that's enough. Sergeant Rivers? Yes, sir. Techcom believes that being marked for termination is a badge of honor. A sign that we're doing something right. We wear it proudly. Knowing you're wearing such a badge, Rivers, is all I need to trust you with handling this mission. Commander Baron will fill you in on the details. Good luck, soldier. Over and out. Looks like you're going to Hollywood Hills. Dr. Edwin Mack is the one who taught us how to use Skynet's weapons, so there's a chance he can do it again. Take him that second generation plasma rifle and see if he's able to reprogram it. If we want to use Skynet's weapons, we need to bypass their encryption lockouts. How will I find him? He's obsessed with surveillance. So when you get there, look for any cameras, biometric sensors, or any other tech stuff. He should be around. That's it. What do you need? Was Mac the one whose drone you smashed? Yes. Yes, it was. I've never told this to anyone, but... Before I met Mac and Perry, I was wandering alone. Didn't have a map, so I drew one myself. The first people I came across were two guys. Old enough to remember Judgment Day. We camped out together. They gave me advice, we shared some stories. Sounds nice, right? See, there are still good people out there. <laughs> they weren't good. Although, not cutting my throat in my sleep makes them more or less gentlemen. When I woke up, all my things were gone, including my map. There I was, lost in the desert. Thirst and hunger. I knew I was gonna die. I passed out with my face in the sand. But next thing, I was lying in a bed, bathed and wearing clean clothes. <clears throat> You're lucky someone found you. Someone did find me. Too bad it was Skynet. Through the window, I saw thousands of Terminators. First, I thought it was a work camp. But it was something else. A Skynet research facility. They kept me alive, but I didn't know why. I thought I was the only human there. But after a while, someone came into my cell. A man. Well-dressed, clean-shaven. 
You want to take a guess who that was? An infiltrator. In a way. He was a traitor to his race. Bastard was selling every piece of knowledge the machines didn't have. In return, they gave him everything he wanted. When he was done stuffing his face with food, he had another request. He wanted a whore. It lasted months until I got to wrap a towel around his neck and make his eyes pop. You don't want to see people for what they really are. I've seen their true face. That traitor, those two guys in the desert, Mac, they all showed it to me. It's not pretty. The truth is, the only reason I fight for the Resistance is because I despise people just a little less than the machines. Um, anything I should know about Dr. Mac before I leave? Only that he can't be trusted, and he's highly manipulative. So you need to stay cautious. Sure, let's trust someone who gets called Dr. Death. That won't bite us in the ass. In the meantime, I'll see what I can learn from the new CPU we acquired from that infiltrator. This could be the breakthrough that we've all been waiting for. I need to concentrate, so please don't disturb me. Jacob, do you have a minute? Of course. I've heard that you're going to Hollywood Hills. Well, with Baron yelling like that, the whole shelter heard. He wanted me to tell you if I needed anything, so here it is. When you get to Hollywood Hills, could you stop by my old house? It's near the Griffith Park tennis courts. I wonder if Peter went there and left something for me. I know he'd be stupid to go there, since now it's behind the Annihilation line, but then again, he was always full of stupid ideas. I'll see what I can do. Thank you. Look at him. He never talks to anyone. He just sits there. He's one of those machines. Jacob! What's the situation like in the shelter? Not that great. People are getting nervous. A lot have already left and even more planned to leave. Even Mark and Laura saw him packing earlier. And what about you? Uh, just the thought of running again is making me sick. Must be getting old. Plus, we got everything we could need right here. Where else would I go? Besides, I have faith that Baron would never let anything happen to this place. She's way too upset about security. Earlier, you said that a new era started. What changed? Well, for one thing, with Tucker dead, I became the new leader of the group. Something I never expected or wanted, for that matter. Uh, 
What did you do about it? That same night, I looked around at all those people who survived, and I felt scared. Scared of what they expected of me. I started to walk away like I was on autopilot. I don't know if I wanted to run away or to kill myself, but, but then something surreal happened. I found a metal door in the ground in the middle of nowhere. I was real unsure about what I might find under it, but what I did find was the aftermath of a massacre. More Terminators? That's exactly what I thought at first, but it turned out to be something even more scary. It looked like they decided to commit suicide. I couldn't understand it. To me, they had everything. Food, water. They even had a case of beer. So, I got shit-faced and started crying over my brother's death. But I realized something. I realized that I could maybe survive there. Did you stay there by yourself? No. I told everybody about the place. I felt I owed them. After that, we were all right. That night, I learned two things. Firstly, that it's okay to be scared. Secondly, that there are two sides to everybody. Ironically, me being a scaredy cat turned me into a good leader. And that's how I found that place, and that's what motivated me to help others. But Tucker, he was a leader from the start, but he had an ugly side too. He killed those who opposed him. He was a real scumbag, but he was my brother. He made me want to be a good person for the both of us. Our hangover wasn't a high price to pay for that lesson. Anything? Can I see your hardware? Jacob, I didn't see you there.
Is everything okay? You seem far away. Nothing can get past you, can it? I've been thinking about the day we met. <clears throat> I never told you how we really ended up there. You can tell me anything. I know I can. That's why you're the first person I'm telling this to. That day, loud hammering woke me up. When I came downstairs, I saw my father nailing the window shut. <clears throat> Through the crack, I saw them coming. Hundreds of metal heads and their red eyes. Even though they're just empty shells, I could feel the hate radiating from them. What did you do? I made Patrick stay upstairs and went back to talk to my father. We argued for a minute or two, and I tried to pull him away from the window. He pushed me away. I tried it again, but he shoved me. And this time I fell. I didn't recognize him as he was reaching for a shotgun. He said, I shouldn't worry about the machines. They wouldn't hurt us. I don't even remember how. But the gun was already in my hands. I closed my eyes and went someplace else. <clears throat> didn't even hear the shock. I didn't hear Patrick's steps either. He saw you? He did. He was staring at me like I was a stranger. He didn't scream or cry, he just stared. I threw the gun away, grabbed Patrick, and tried not to notice the hole in my father's unmoving chest. As we ran, I could hear them coming, so we found somewhere to hide. Then you came. I wanted to tell someone about all this, but I was afraid to. I'm glad you did. I am too. We talk a lot about how heartless the machines are. And I started to think that maybe I was too. I probably would have convinced myself of that if it wasn't for you keeping me sane. Thank you for everything. I never thought I would find a friend in times like these. Where are you going? I'm going out scavenging. Don't worry. I'm past thinking about running away. Knowing how much you'd miss me made me not want to leave. <clears throat> Where's Patrick? He's getting ready. I'm taking him with me. I figure it's time for him to see what's out there. <clears throat> is, it, is, it, is it true? human now? Well, what's with the dogs? Uh, they've been like that ever since they brought that thing in. <laughs>